All right, Paul, so we're here chatting in Detroit. Um, so tell us about the first thing you remember drawing. <laughs> first thing I remember drawing. Uh, I guess it must have been about, I don't know, like four or something. Um, and it was this picture of um, like canoeists going down white water rapids seen from above. Um, after I'd watched some program about it or something. All right. <laughs> who, who do you consider some of your uh, major artistic influences? Major artistic influences. Um, well, kind of in, in general, um, primarily manga and anime artists. I'd say um, there's a specific artist called Jiro Taniguchi that I've taken a lot of influence from. Um, animators, uh, Koji Morimoto, Tatsuki Tanaka. Um, I absolutely love Joshua Middleton as well. Um, then I take a lot of influence from um, kind of golden age illustrators who weren't really doing comics, but um, uh, people like Aubrey Beardsley, Arthur Rackham, uh, Edmund Dulac, uh, Kay Nielsen. So is there anyone whose artistic talent you wish you could steal and bend it to your own <laughs> evil purposes? Definitely, definitely Tatsuki Tanaka. He's, um, if I could draw like that, I'd be a very happy man. <laughs> <laughs> so how about uh, major influ influences from other creative fields? Uh, any okay. books or films or music? Or? Um, well, I use music a lot whilst I'm working. Um, I listen to audiobooks whilst I'm working as well a lot, so... Um, I really enjoy kind of stupid, mindless, epic fantasies. <laughs> um, but in terms of kind of actual literary influence, um, I'd say I absolutely love Ursula Le Guin. I think she's probably my favourite writer. Um, she kind of inspired me to sort of do the writing side of the things I do um, and, originally. And your favourite novels of hers? Um, I think. I like The Left Hand of Darkness or The Birthday of the World best. Alright. So, before Freak Angels, uh, what were you doing? How did you break into comics? Um, I think it was a mixture of things. The first, um, first time anything happened, I actually I took my portfolio up to San Diego Comic Con and got a portfolio review with uh, Tokyo Pop. Um, who suggested that I enter the Rising Stars of Manga competition that they just started running in the UK, which is a bit of a palm off, but I actually won it. <laughs> um, so that was the first time I had any sort of serious comics thing. Um, and then off the back of that, I managed to get um, a gig doing a manga adaptation of Shakespeare's The Tempest, uh, which was an interesting project. And from that, it was uh, Freak Angels. Excellent. So is there any one decision that, uh, uh, if you hadn't made it, your, your life would have been your life would have turned out completely differently oh definitely yeah um, at a level I studied chemistry maths and physics and art and I actually got a place on deferred entry to go to University College of London to study physics um, and decided to take a year out to do a foundation course in art where I discovered illustration and went on to do animation. But without that, I would have ended up doing physics, and I don't know where <laughs> I'd be now. <laughs> doing physics, wow. <laughs> so, uh, when you went about creating the Freak Angels world of drowned London, was there any specific references? How did you go about figuring out the accuracy of the flooding? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, or in short strokes. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the primary reference was a site that Warren sent on, actually. It was um, a, f a London flood map. It was basically a Google map where you could raise the flood level and it would show you which areas were flooded and which areas weren't. But that didn't help for figuring out how high flood the flood would come up buildings. Mm -hmm. So essentially what I did was I took the water level of the Thames and then if I had a photograph that I was working from, I'd replicate a man a certain number of times up okay. inside of the building to figure out how high the water would go. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so it's mainly like that, the mixture of those two techniques. All right. So what about the, your process of creating some of the steampunk machinery, like oh. <laughs> like KK's copter and the big rooftop guns that circus people fire? It's a mixture of research and imagination, because I, I still haven't figured out how complex steam technology works properly. 
basically. I mean, none of the <laughs> basics, but um, I guess the trick was making it look convincing rather than making it actually work in any way. Um, so yeah, it was. Uh, although I, I really enjoy like that sort of uh, design design aesthetic, so it, it came quite naturally in some ways. So, what's your uh, favorite part about doing Freak Angels on a weekly basis? Hmm. I think. Um, in a way, the weekly deadline kind of puts me on... It's like a good thing and a bad thing, because on, on the one hand, it's so much work and a lot of pressure constantly, but on the other hand, it you know, forces me to reduce work constantly that I can then look, at, look back on and kind of be proud of the volume of. Um, in terms of the actual kind of production, um, I think it's just the fact that it, it, it makes me draw so many different things. I'm really excited every time I kind of come across something I've never drawn before. Like Wet Kate? Yeah, for example. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're two years in since since you started working on Freak Angels and, and well over 300 pages. Mm -hmm. How has your work changed or your approach to the work changed during that time? Hmm. Um, I think my style's sort of shifted slowly over time. When I first started Freak Angels, I wasn't so sure about the style I was using because I'd literally kind of invented it for the project. Um, and it fluctuated backwards and forwards between different kind of aspects of the same style. I think I've sort of solidified it a bit more and, and managed to kind of pin down exactly the way I say, for example, draw faces from all the different angles I could possibly do it from. Um, in terms of my work itself, I think the, the line work's got slightly finer and slightly more detailed. I now do a lot more kind of incidental detail within backgrounds and, um, and character clothing and stuff like that. It's, it's quite a tricky battle actually figuring out when to stop on detail because it's kind of addictive. All right, so this is now your second trip to America. What's different from what you thought it would be? What's different? Um, I'm, not sure. I'm surprised by the size of the conventions, despite kind of being told that they're not the largest out there. Yeah. Because um, they're you know, at least as big as the largest convention in the UK, if not larger. Um, although I have been to San Diego before, so <laughs> I know what the large ones look like. Um, other than that, kind of... Do we you live up to all the stereotypes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. All right, so... You know, you don't like chickens. You've, you've told me now you don't like drawing the chickens. Like drawing but chickens. everybody loves the chickens. What, what do you have against the chickens? They're hard to draw. It's very hard to draw chickens. It's very hard to find reference of chickens flying. Um, I had, to, <laughs> I had to, to find good reference of chickens flying. I had to get a copy of City of God and go through that opening sequence with them chasing the chicken frame by frame <laughs> to find decent <laughs> screenshots that I could use as reference. Because chicken wings, they're just, you know, they're this, they're obviously evolving out of them or something. They're <laughs> totally non functional and not proper looking. So, uh, I guess in closing, there's loads of aspiring new artists that are, that are jumping out of Whitechapel and are getting turned on by your work. Uh, what one piece of advice do you have for them? Oh, wow. Um, or a couple <laughs> small, or one piece. teeny tiny bits of. What, what giant flood of advice? Um, I've made maybe two major pieces of advice. One would be, if you're working in a heavy stylism, um, never deceive yourself that you can get away without drawing from life or using life reference um, or learning all the basic underlying art skills that you need. It can be really frustrating going through art education and being told that your comics aren't proper art or whatever, and I've experienced that, but everything your teachers have to teach you is vitally important, so you can't kind of... You can't have one or the other, you've got to have both, um, even if you stick with your kind of heavy stylism. Um, and the other one would be, draw comics. <laughs> if you want to be a comic artist, a lot of people draw a lot of pin-ups, or um, they just draw a lot of face shots, or um, maybe they don't even consider drawing comics. And writing is a very large part of drawing comics, even if you're never going to write yourself. So try and write your own projects, try and draw your own comics, you'll understand so much more about storytelling afterwards. Excellent. Well, thank you. Well, this was Paul Duffield coming in from Motor City. Cool.